In part two of the cutting tools I use, I'm going to be focusing on my rotary cutters. Each one of these has a different purpose, which brand its personal preference. The 60 millimeter one I have is from Fiskars. The blade is retractable just by pressing the little button. The 60 millimeter one I use mainly for cutting through several layers of fabric and also cutting my batting. The next one is another Fiskars and again the rotary blade is retractable. By pressing the button it'll snap back into place. The other 45 millimeter one I have is from Ulfa. The next one is an Omnigrid. This one I purchased a while back and one of my shopping trips and I'll talk a bit about it because I did say I was going to do a review on it. It's a 28 millimeter Omnigrid rotary cutter. It has a guard on it that protects it when not in use. And I'll have to read some of the directions on here just so I don't miss anything. It is pressure sensitive. Pressure sensitive means that the blade will not come out unless you put pressure on it. It can be used left or right handed. On the back, you move that dial. It says on here soft or hard. Soft means if you have it in that position, it's going to cut single layer of fabric. When you move it to the right that says hard, that is for cutting through multiple layers of fabric. On the back, it says it has a soft grip handle that reduces wrist and hand strain. The blade that came in it is a tungsten carbon steel blade, and it is a Kai blade. It cuts single or multiple fabrics in any direction. For best results, it says use Kai blades. Most 28 millimeter blades will work with this cutter. The blade engages automatically when pressure is applied for cutting. Over the last couple of months I've been using this cutter and I really like it for small projects. Last but not least is an 18 millimeter rotary cutter. This one has a retractable guard that exposes the blade so you can cut and you push it back in the safety position. When choosing your rotary cutter, you're going to want one that is comfortable in your hand and does not cause you a lot of fatigue when you're cutting. What fabrics you're cutting is also going to make a difference to what rotary cutter you're going to choose. The 60 millimeter one cuts through multiple layers of fabric. These ones, the 45, won't cut through as much fabric. And again, the 28 millimeter is not going to cut through as many layers of fabric. And of course, the mini one I only use for single layer fabrics and cutting around small curved edges. Your blades are going to wear out and you will have to replace them. So this part of the video, I'm going to show you a couple of things that I've learned and that I do with my rotary cutters. Before I change my blade, I always clean it. To clean my Ulfa, I just turn it over and I release and the blade will drop out. And I'm going to clean all the debris out of my blade. Sometimes all it takes, instead of replacing the blade, you just have to clean it. I've got a few q-tips here and I'm just going to clean out all the debris out of the cutter. One important thing is always be sure to protect 
your hands so you don't cut yourself on the blade. So I've cleaned out most of the debris out of there. The other thing I do is I will take some alcohol, which I have in a little pump bottle, or I will use an alcohol swab. I'm just using a little cloth here, and I'm going to just clean the area with some alcohol. And just clean that up, making sure that I get all those areas clean. So next I'm going to clean my blade. So I'm going to pick up my blade and holding it at the back, I'm just going to run my alcohol cloth around there. Now, I'm going to be using a little magnet. Here's different types that you can use, but I'm going to use this one. I'm going to take off that blade very carefully and just hold it with my magnet and just clean off anything that's on the blade. If you don't have a magnet or anything, always make sure that you grab your blade like this, not like this. So I've just cleaned everything off. And like I said, sometimes all it takes is just a little bit of cleaning of your blade and it will last a little bit longer. Now before I put this back together, I'm going to just take some regular sewing machine oil and just put a drop of oil on there and it just takes a drop and the same thing on this plastic piece and now I'll just replace the blade making sure I have the guard out turn it over and snap that back into place Give it a couple little runs like that. I'll test it out just to see if it's cutting any better. If it doesn't cut any better, I'll replace the blade. I also have new blades and I've labeled them new. When the blade is no longer good, I put it in the used and I dispose of it in my recycle in the plastic case. The last thing I want to talk about is do rotary blade sharpeners really work? This is still in the testing stage, but this OmniGrad dual rotary blade sharpener I bought at Michael's and I did get it on clearance for $10. So in the testing that I have been doing, I am going to show you how I am testing this out. After I've cleaned my rotary cutter, I'm going to take the blade out with my little magnet. I'll take it out in case that your rotary blades come in. We'll have a little knobby thing on it. So you can put that in there, hold it with the magnet, and you can clean off the blade. I've been doing this before I oil the blade. So this sharpener comes in three pieces. These two attach the blade. And there is a light side and a dark side. And it says to unscrew the handles, which I have already done. It comes like this. So I've unscrewed the handles. And then it says center the blade on the handle with the screw. So I'm going to take my blade and I'm going to put it on there, slide my magnet off and attach it. So the abrasive disc has two sharpening surfaces, the coarse, which is the lighter side, and the fine, which is the darker. It says to start with the coarse side. So I'm going to take the coarse side it says to hold the disc in one hand 
place the handle and the blade assembly onto the abrasive disc. Apply force and twist in one direction 10 to 20 times, depending on the condition of the blade. It says turn the handle assembly over and then sharpen on the reverse side. It says during the sharpening process, keep the sharpening disc moderately wet. It says you can dip the tip of your finger in water and rub a ring of water around the disc. This prevents metal particles from clogging the sharpening surface. After using the sharpener, clean the grit surface with a damp cloth. So that's what I'm going to do. On the coarse side, I just have a little bit of water in a little cup here and I'm just using a it's just a mouth swab made of um, foam so I'm just gonna run a little bit of water around there a little too much and now I'm going to place my blade in the sharpener turn it 10 to 20 times depending on the condition of the blade okay then I'm going to take it and do the other side. Now I'm not doing 10 to 20 times for the sake of the video. So now what I'm going to do is turn it over and with the dark side, the fine side, I'm going to just, it's a little too wet, I'm just going to run a little bit of water around there and now I'll sharpen the other side with the fine side. Turn it over. And there we go. I'm now going to just take a little cloth and just wipe around. Now I've been doing this every time I clean my blade. I'm going to put the blade back in, clean off any little debris that's on there, take my little magnet, make sure my blade guard is out, put it back together, and snap it back into place. Sorry, one thing I forgot was to put a drop of oil on there. So now as I've been testing this, I have found that by doing that every single time I clean my blade and clean my rotary cutter, my blades have been lasting longer than they normally would. Up until now, I haven't really found that blade sharpeners work much, but Doing it the way I've been doing it, by sharpening it every single time I clean my blade, I've found that my blades have been lasting longer. So again, this is the Omni Grid Rotary Dual Blade Sharpener. I got it for $10 on clearance at Michael's. However, when I checked online, they couldn't run around $40. Wouldn't you know it? After filming that video, I've been showing you how to remove the blade the wrong way. So now I'm going to show you the right way. To remove your blade, make sure you have your guard in the closed position. Turn it over. Release the blade. Push the blade out. Remove your blade. And to put it back together again, Pop the blade on, lay it down, and snap it in place, and it's ready to go again. Boy, I tell you, some days I just really lose it. So that's about it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.